Hey guys, welcome back to this tutorial on how to animate with Adobe Animate. In this video, we'll be animating the caricature we drew in the previous video. We'll be animating the head to turn to the to its left and then to its right and then back to the center to face us in the front view. So before we start, I'd like you to import the caricature that you drew as a reference into Adobe Animate. So we can base on that to trace the outline of the character to kind of maintain the resemblance. So yeah, let's just get started. All right, so before we animate for it to look like the caricature that we have, I'm going to make a rough animation for just the head turn. I'm not going to make any details on the face or anything. So I just want to have a, a guideline that I'll follow to draw the head as it rotates from left to the right. So I'm going to start with the first frame. So I'm basically going to keep in mind the safe areas. So I'm going to keep everything in the middle. So the head will not exceed this line maybe somewhere. So I just represent the head with this basic shape. A shape, I think this it would be best if you use a shape that looks like the head of the character you've drawn. And since it's just a sketch, you can just move fast as quickly as you can, as long as you can see what's in there and be able to tell what you've drawn. It's fine. It's just fine. <laughs> so remember, it's just a loose sketch. There's going to be the key animation. We're going to take our time and make a clean up version of it. Pretty sure this is fine. <coughs> Let me save just before I forget to save this one. Tutorial 2, I guess. So now, as you can see, I have my frame lined up perfectly. So remember, we are just going to focus on drawing the front view, the recorder view, and then the side view. And then we'll just duplicate them the way we did this one. But that will be for the actual drawing that will do the line art that will do for the animation. And with this one, you can we'll also go over it by adding in between. But that will be after we put the main the main um, line art there. We're just going to do the animation for this side. And then when we are done with everything over there, we're just going to duplicate it and place them on the right positions. So let's go ahead and create a new layer since the layer we were using at first was just a sketch layer. So we can call it a sketch. Alright. And then we can go to this one and call it line art. Yeah, Adobe Animate actually hates putting space bars between characters. And so it turns them into underscores but that's fine all right so we can go ahead and lock this one so that we don't move it by mistake let's click and see one more time this is cool <coughs> this is cool so we can um, reduce the opacity of this one by right clicking properties reduce opacity to 25 like usual so you can still see it play at the back and then we'll be able to draw ours on this layer. So with this new layer, we're going to draw our character. If you think you're gonna struggle with the drawing, you could just create a reference layer and then drag the caricature here 
and then you can move it to exactly where the drawing is supposed to be but first let's reduce the opacity so we can see behind you can see through the yeah just like that then we try to make it fit the size of the head remember you press and hold shift before you enlarge and you move it to the head this is great this is perfect <coughs> you see it kind of snaps into it So with this we can also lock that and then take our time to draw the details of the line arts. So there's already a keyframe here so I'm not going to worry myself to create another keyframe. Now I'm going to just try to take my time and get the features in as good as possible. And feel free to use simple lines, there's no need to make it very detailed because this is an animation. Don't be so worried about what you're gonna do for the line arts because they appear in a split second so it doesn't really change much. So as you can see this is the only thing that makes animation hard that is the cleaning up to make the line art look accurate it's not so difficult it's just time consuming oh and don't worry if you're not using a graphics tablet just like in adobe illustrator there's a pen tool here and you can take your time to use it to draw curves and also use your mouse but you have to take your time because the mouse won't give you the perfect accuracy that you get from holding a pen in your hand all right so this could be a good front view let's just move on to the next frame which is the side view let's work on the simple ones first side view i said blank keyframe and with that i think i can go to the reference i can touch the reference photo and move it yes so i can get the side view of the head this looks accurate enough so i can lock it again and then go back to my line art layer and then take time to draw start with the eyes so it's the same example that we use for the bouncing ball that we're using over here just that we decide where the head turns to we draw that frame and then we just draw the in-betweens later on to make it look like it's actually moving so nothing new is the same principle that we're doing and remember this is an animation so you can just go crazy on the simplification of the line arts animations take a lot of time so if your sketch is simple then you actually be able to finish on time i guess now let's go ahead and draw the three quarter and then as usual we move our reference photo so we can get it better position for the three quarter yep i think they could not do all right let's draw a three quarter view now over here sketch is kind of making it easier for me to animate the head because i've already done the difficult parts figuring out how the head shape is going to look in the bit of three quarter view so all i'm doing is just tracing over it oh and um, one thing I realized about Adobe Animate is that if you've not locked any of the other layers, if you use the eraser, it's going to affect the ones that are unlocked as well. So try to keep the other layers locked as you work on one layer. That way, you don't get to make any mistake and erase anything that you've done. This part is actually kind of easy, you just have to draw between them. So you look at which part of the body you are drawing and then you draw in between the red and green strokes. This is what in between it is all about. It's actually quite easy, you don't really need to master a lot of anatomy or something before you can do that. So if you see that the colors are overlapping, it means 
nice there was no specific movement at that point so you can just redraw over it so I just notice that this is the outside of the ear this is the outside of the green ear so I draw in between those two lines that's my in between Alright, so I'm in between for this part, just before the side view. So I create a blank keyframe, turn on my onion skin, I have my before and after. So let's focus on the jawline first. Alright, so now we're gonna go ahead and color our animation. But before we do, I'd like you to consider the fact that you could make mistakes on the line art and it might end up becoming permanent if you save and turn off the software for a while. So what I usually do is I duplicate the line art so that I can work on one the colors and then keep the other one for backup just in case anything happens because Adobe Animate has this attitude where you can't really fill on a different layer within a certain line art on another layer. So it kind of has to be on the same layer that you have to draw. And you don't want to make mistakes and get your line art all filled up with the wrong colors. So yeah, so I have a backup of the line art over here. And I'm going to use the copy to do the color. So I'm not going to waste my time coloring every single one of them. I'm just going to color the first set, but that's from here to there. And then I'll start duplicating them and replacing them on these frames. So for this one, I'm going to start picking these colors. Then we look at the actual skin color over here. So I'm guessing the color will be somewhere close to Alright, so when you're picking colors from in here in Adobe Animate, it's it naturally starts with this weird color palette that you might find it really hard to control. So I need you to, instead of choosing it being on R, send it to H. So the R stands for red, as in RGB. Red, and then each of them kind of shows you the colors you get if you increase the intensity of the color. Blah, blah, blah. It's kind of complicated, so you just focus on the H. The S is also a different thing. The S is for saturation stuff. The B is for brightness. Now let's focus on H. H is for hue. So the hue is just like that's where you get the color palette that matches Photoshop. So we're trying to get the skin color, something like that. And then we're gonna fill it and see how it looks like. Cool. All right, so as you can see over here, there appears to be a little bit of space between the line art of my character. And so the paint bucket tool is not filling. So you can go to the properties of the paint bucket tool. And then there's this thing called, moving from object to tool, there's this thing called gap size now the gap size determines the, how much space how much gaps you have between your lines that the paint bucket tool is going to tolerate or not and so you can tell it to not close gaps that means if there's a gap between in your lines it's not going to fit 
privacy close small gaps it means when the gaps are small or negligible it should fill it and then if there are large gaps it should close for this one is going to close the larger gaps no matter how big it is as long as it's kind of a gap between the line art <coughs> or let me see between two lines it's going to still fill it so right now it's not working with the don't close gaps and so i'm going to change it to close small gaps voila yeah, as you can see it filled the gaps right. let's move on here's a little bit of caution as you can see i've locked my previous layers just so that i don't make a mistake to fill the line art or any of the or I fill into any other layer just like i did for the erasing when i'm erasing the line art i lock everything so that i won't make mistakes try and do the same for yours that way it makes things easier all right so you see there's another gap over here and it's not filling so i'm just going to increase the size of the gap you should the size of the gap you should tolerate i'm going to increase it to put medium gaps yeah it works so if the gap is very small you just focus on two small gaps so i guess i'm done with the skin color i'm only focusing on this one once again i'm only focusing on these ones because i can duplicate them so I'm not going to strip myself coloring all the guys. I'm just going to color these ones. So yeah. This is just like what I did when I was doing the line arts. I just duplicate it later on. And then flip horizontal wherever it needs to be flipped. Alright, so I'm done coloring. Like I said, I'm going to be copying and pasting. You can decide to color them one after the other, but that's gonna take a very long time, so I don't I don't want to stress myself doing that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and move the head piece by piece. So this is a repetition of this. So I can just duplicate this in places here. So I have it playing through. So which one is the front view again? 57 is a front view. I'll go back to the front view, pull it in. 57, bam, front view. Alright, so we are done with the animation. Let's see how it looks. Yes, it looks like okay. That's perfect. And here's one thing I also want you to do. Sometimes Adobe Animate renders invisible layers, layers that you've turned off the visibility for. So I want you to create a whole rectangle shape with the rectangle to change the fill color with white and create your own background for it. That way, because the layer is between the main art and the line art, the second line art that we made, we get to have it covered all of them. We create our own art group for it. I, I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. It's kind of complicated, but I'm just, I mean, when you render your first one and then you see the other layers coming through in the final video, you know, you turn them off, you understand. So yeah, thanks for watching, that's basically it for this video, and give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and consider subscribing if you want to see more on this channel, and feel free to ask me any question in the comments in case you didn't understand something, like briefly um, explain in a few words. Yeah, so once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.